I, I think, you know, 95% of the wealth went to the top 1% under a, the, the communist socialist president, Obama. The, you know, they, they always call him that. Um, that number blows me away. Like, that number is breathtaking um, and gets across a failure. That's not a, you know, that's not a positive thing in a society for that much to, to, to go to the top 1%. Instead of using taxes, I think your argument would be to get rid of the contradictions, that That's there's a contradiction when you're trying to take money from one segment of the population. Don't distribute it that way in the first place. Is that fair? Yeah, it's a simple idea, you know, and it's an idea. I think every family, every set of parents I've ever met understands this. Let me, let me use a simple story to explain it. You Let's imagine, you know, you and your partner are taking your two kids out, you know, to the park on a Sunday afternoon. And in the park, you're having a nice time, and you encounter uh, somebody with an ice cream truck, and your two children, like they would, right? I want an ice cream. Get me an ice cream. All right. So now you go to the ice cream truck person, and you say, I have these two kids. Give me the two. Give me two ice cream cones. So he prepares the ice cream cones and he hands them to you. Now let's follow the logic. You could give the two ice cream cones to one of your two children, right? If you do that, you're an idiot. But there's a lot of people who, who might try that. Then they would discover within seconds that the kid that they didn't give the ice creams to starts yelling and screaming and acting out because... That's very hurtful what you just did. So then you turn to the kid you gave the two ice creams to and say, give your brother or give your sister one of those two ice creams. Yeah, now this is a trauma for that kid who got the two ice creams, is terribly happy with the two ice creams and doesn't want to give them up. You're going to create hatred, bitterness, anger, and difficulty between your two children. And if you're not an idiot, you will have learned the lesson. If you have two kids and you buy two ice creams, give each of them one. Don't have the struggle to redistribute the ice creams. And the way you avoid it is don't distribute them unequally in the first place. I hate, <coughs> let me just speak personally. I hate all these struggles that divide people. Tax this one, tax that one. Rich people wanting to tax the poor. Poor people wanting to tax the rich. And I know how that story ends. The rich have all the connections. The rich have all the pull. So they win that one. They, they shift the burden on. This is disgusting. It makes us hate each other. It divides a society. It creates bitterness, just like it would with the two kids and the ice cream story. The way to deal with inequality is not by redistributing the wealth so it's less unequal. It's by not distributing it unequally in the first place. Give everybody a living wage. If you want some gradations, make that a public decision that everybody gets to, who gets a bit more, who gets a bit less. Make the differences as you see fit, but don't create the absurdity of this country where the top 1% or the top 5% have a wildly disproportionate amount, and then we try to use taxes and welfare payments and all this other stuff to take claw back after we've distributed it badly, some of it. It makes the people who have to wait for the redistribution feel as though there's something wrong with them. It makes the people you're taking stuff away from nasty and bitter and harsh. It creates tensions and political horror. It, this is so stupid. The mystery to me is why the human race continues to do this. This is, this is like watching parents who continue to give one kid the two friggin' ice cream cones and wait to see the explosion and the fireworks when the other kid feels like crap because of how you're treating him. Yeah. This is, you know, if we saw it with a parent, we consider that to be cruelty to children. We might even report such a parent because this is not healthy for those kids to go through that experience. 
There's something wrong with a parent who does that. Well, there's something wrong with an economic system that does that. And the economic system that does it is called capitalism. It has been producing inequality from day one, and it is one of the most important reasons why the human race can and should do better than capitalism. I agree with you on that. I, I Hands down, I agree with you on that. That's one of those you had met hello things. Um, it seems utterly bizarre that that much wealth will be given to a small body of people, let alone control. I mean, because we're talking about 1% controlling the lives of millions of people, you know, it's like, not to mention their own self-interest. It, it's it's going to, look, I tend to believe environment creates behavior. And in a society where we have this odd thing of individualism, like, you know, everybody pulls themselves up by their own bootstraps. Um, and much of this wealth is just inherited. It's not, you know, it's, it's not, you know, somebody did something for it. And even if somebody does create a company, ultimately the workers are the ones that are doing the labor. The workers are the ones that are buying the products. Um, it's an odd system. Uh, it, it, I understand why a top 1% will want it. I don't understand why everybody else will be okay with it. That's right. It's a mystery. But look, we have a country where our leader is a walking illustration of all of this. Look at Mr. Trump. His father left him. I don't know what the numbers are. It doesn't matter. The, the number I see most often is $200 million. What kind of a country does that? A country that pretends equal opportunity? I didn't have any such opportunity. My father left me exactly $11. I mean, come on, this is ridiculous. Equal opportunity to what? For your children to get an education? Don't be silly. For your children to have a leg up on getting into college? Don't be silly. Mr. Trump has had everything handed to him on a silver platter. He was able to uh, buy real estate and then watch as it went up. It didn't go up because of him. It went up because the city of New York became a playground for the richest people on the planet and headquarters for the biggest corporations. So his the real estate value went up. I mean, this is a no brainer. We allow him not only to do all of that, but then basically to buy his way into the, into the White House, uh, as so many of the leading politicians. Here's a number for people to think about. Uh, the percentage of Americans who are millionaires is roughly 3%. The percentage of the members of the United States Senate who are millionaires is 70%, 70. Okay, I mean, come on, who are you fooling? Who's supposed to be so uninformed as to not understand there's a difference between 70% millionaires in the Senate and 3%? So we're expecting the millionaires to be really out there on the lookout for what's good for everybody. Stop. Nobody's that dumb. And I think if we have the courage to say it and to put it out there, it may take time, but we do have an advantage And because what we're saying is pretty friggin' obvious if you just give people a chance to hear it and think about it. Three quick